16 of them begin to walk in. Flags raised. And it's not going to be a first time up. They're coming in too quickly. A false start. Robbie Supple waving his flag furiously atop the rostrum. And he released the tape, so the runners will have to turn and come in once again. We've not had that many false starts so far this week, have we, touching wood? Largely attributable, one suspects, to the small fields overall. They behaved themselves in the Coral Cup, didn't they? But with at least three signed-on front runners in this race, I guess that was always a, a possibility. And the tape is uh, stretched back across the course. Flags not yet raised. And now I think one or two of them have got too close to the tape. So they will have to take another turn. So hopefully this one will be a go up. They turn again. Flag still not raised. Once again, I suspect they've got too close to the tape. And Robbie Supper will send them back again. A game of cat and mouse between starter and jockeys at the moment. Flags out this time. Now they're off for the Johnny Henderson uh, Grand Annual. On the way towards the first, Calico with the orange cap is up amongst the early leaders with last year's winner Mascada in a red jacket. Uh, Gemerald in the blue and white is handy with the grey unexpected party. Harper's Brook in a pale jacket just behind the leading line. They're already bearing down on the second and Gemerald are just about picked up ahead. The Folks Tiara is the early back marker with the nose bound in Hardy de Soy. And now they make the run between fences two and three and Gemerald leads up to Calico, the orange cap, and then Harper's Brook in the pink and mauve and the grey unexpected party. Triple trade in the red and yellow, followed down towards the inner by Freya Darm in the blue and whites, and up in that cluster as well, Mascada. Madara, orange jacket, sits back in midfield, crossing the third head of path to Rue. The folks Tiara made a bad mistake when disputing at last place, and they're already on to the fourth. Gemeron didn't get particularly high there. Calico came alongside the king of PRS back in the field in a check jacket. It was untidy, and they turned to meet rising ground, and Gemeron strides on again. From Calico, the grey unexpected party. Then Harper's Brock nose bounded Liberty Hunter in a blue jacket is out wide from triple trade as they close in on fence five, taken on the incline. Gemerant lifts up a couple of lengths ahead, so watching the rest stream over it. Hardy de Soy is last, but one after that error, the folks tiara is a little detached. Safara has only got those two behind him in a white and green jacket just in front of him. Sarawa, Solness, and the king of PRS as they make the uh, downhill run and head on uh, towards the first taken over on the far side, fence number six. Gemerant leading unexpected party stable mate calico towards the near side harper's brook up between them liberty hunt around wide and then path to ruin the green and yellow who tracks the leaders with Freya Dharma and mascada uh, madara orange jacket is being shadowed by sarawa who's out fairly deep with a white cap followed there by solmes hardy de soy and the folks tiara are pretty remote at this stage as they move on towards the first of a pair of open ditches the others well grouped gemeron just in front to unexpected party who jumped up while mascada uh, hit that and a very bad mistake in rear from hardy de soy who's not going with much momentum and the leaders are already heading on towards the ninth through halfway in the Johnny Henderson Grand Annual. And Mascada has lost that prominent position as a result of that mistake. And it looks as though Hardy de Soy is completely tailed off now. He's still struggling on, but a long way behind the others. So heading towards the open ditch at the top of the hill, it's four out. Gemeron to unexpected party. Harper's Brook in a pale jacket, a close third. Then Calico Liberty Hunter jumping well out wide. Path the Rue between horses. Then Madara the orange jacket, a triple trade on the inner of Freya Darm. Couple of lengths to Safara, red cap on the descent ahead of the king of PRS. And then Solness in the dark green and white. Uh, to Sarawa Mascada, uh, last of the main group now. Some ten lengths off the leaders, freewheeling down the hill, but well clear of the folks Tiara and the tail dog Hardy de Soy. 
So three fences left to jump in the Johnny Henderson Grand Annual, and by and large, they're well clustered up here. Gemerand in the blue and white. Uh, unexpected party, the grey moving through to head in now, just about landed in front there. The Folks Tiara, meanwhile, has been pulled up. Hardy de Soy has been pulled up. So about to swing for home. Unexpected party to Gemerand against the running rail, the nose bounded Liberty Hunter out wide. Bang there in the green and yellow is Path de Rue. Uh, further back to Triple Trade, then Madara Orange Jacket, Safari in the green and white red cap need to thread through the field and Saurawar has cut to the inner McManus hoops only four lengths off the lead but a bit short of daylight there as unexpected party leads them at the second last to Liberty Hunter path the Rue Safaro has moved into fourth Liberty Hunter delivered to challenge unexpected party and path the Rue right behind them unexpected party landed in front of the last from Liberty Hunter and then path the Rue these three fighting it out unexpected party great head bowed low, running on willingly, going to be the Skeltons at the double, there might be a party tonight, unexpected party wins the Johnny Henderson Grand Annual from Liberty Hunt to Path de Rue, as Safaro is in fourth, chased in by Gemma Rond and Sal Noir. Two winners on the day for Dan Skelter with Langadan in the Coral Cup and now unexpected party in the Grand Annual. The race, you got a ring round this time last year and he didn't make the cut by two this time. He's here. He is, and uh, a, a great ride from Harry. I thought we were going to take a time a little more than that, but I suppose with the standing start, he got a great start. And, um, yeah, brilliant. I mean, we were trying to get in this race last year, and then out of frustration at the start of this year, I had him super ready at Chepstow, um, and he won a, listed, um, won a listed novice chase, and then that bumped his handicap mark up, ran in the, in the paddy power off his new mark and wasn't, didn't see out the trip, which you can see why I've always been wanting to run over two. And um, uh, just, you know, a, a great ride. We, we wanted to come to this race last year. I'm not saying he'd have won it. Uh, I'm not, because his form since wasn't really good enough. Um, but I thought he had a chance today, but no more than a chance. You know, I think that was a great ride. Dropping to this trip, though, that, that was the key. Harry was saying immediately after the Coral Cup that he was worried about the ground for him? Well, we were, but only because, like, he'd been a bridesmaid so often. And, like, he'd been in all these big races and, and figured, but not figured more than figuring, if that makes sense. And then... Um, yeah, you just start playing on your mind. He won on good ground at Chepstow. Is that all that he and ha everything that he has to have? So, you know, you, you, your mind starts playing tricks on you. But at the end of the day, I remember coming here with Mahayad once and, and, and saying, I don't think we should run. The ground's too soft. And uh, quite rightly, the owner's husband put, put his foot down and said, it's running. <laughs> and then I learned, a great, I learned a great thing that day. And, you know, if you've got them in form, sometimes the ground's not perfect for them, but you've got to run them. And when we spoke to you last Thursday, you were also saying about this horse. He's starting to come. He's starting to yeah. boost. I mean, in the winter, you know, he obviously had a great start to the year. And then in the winter, it was just nowhere. I mean, he was finishing last in four, admittedly good four runner novices chases. But he was finishing last and, you know, never looking like beating a horse. But... Um, Look, the handicapper reassessed him from the Paddy Power days back to the mark he started off this year, you know, and, and, and that was probably probably a big help to him. But um, he's very brave over the last two. I, I, you know, he needed two big jumps, and I wouldn't say I'm surprised he got Harry got both jumps, but fair play to the horse, he needed both of them. And he, he did need both of them. The reception as well here. Yeah, so the, many people are pleased with this. A, a, a pretty enthusiastic group of owners, to be fair, and... Um, you know, Linda Shanahan uh, has been, I think, to every time we've been here, and you know, she, she's. Uh, I said to her straight away, I said, "You've been the, you've been the biggest supporter. You've been here every time." And uh, yeah, the, the, the team that are involved in this horse uh, are, are all connected to uh, Coolmore friends and, and, and relatives and all sorts. So um, there will be an expected party after <laughs> an unexpected party. Well, many congratulations. Sometimes the plan takes two years to execute. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Liberty Hunter has just finished second in the Grand Daniel. I can see his trainer, Evan Williams, is gutted, but that's a huge run from a young horse. Yeah, look, no complaints. We were second best and we had a dream run round, a dream run round, so we've no complaints. What did Harry say afterwards, just that? Well, really, just he, he just thought that he was always in a happy place. Thought he'd win everywhere. <laughs> and um, then those pesky skeletons kept galloping. <laughs> But this is a lovely young horse with some achievements ahead of him. Well, look, I mean, he was, obviously, he's only had two completed runs over fences, so um, it was always a bit of a, a gamble running in a race that's run at such a fierce gallop as this whole race, you know. So um, I'm delighted that he's come through it. I have plenty of belief in the horse, but to come and do that 
you know, seconds lonely, but it's a great, great run, you know. Yeah, definitely. And the, the defeat of Matata, who ran so well in the, in the Arkle, you must have been thinking, oh, that's good. When the rain came and then when Nigel's horse ran such a gallant race in the Arkle, I, I fancied this fella like mad, you know, and um, he's run a great race. He's run a great race. I look forward to seeing what else he does. Well done. Lovely. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thank you. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.